Depend on what you ask. Let, let, let's not Depend on what I ask. The <laughs> yeah. topic is the theological position of Africa, Africa. in the world. And you are saying that um, Nufia Laga mm. came to make some, some claims Split and claim. you want to add or you want to correct or you want to address. So we've given you the platform. You okay. say you don't know what I'm going to ask. As for Nufia Laga, what I wanted to say to him was that he made a statement that Israel, the expression Israel or the name Israel, it is it, fake or it doesn't exist or it came recently. And he also said that he says my people who are called by my name and he says that the God of the Everest or the, the, the name for God, he was emphatic. That's, a, that's what the issue is. That's what the problem is. The name for God is Yeve. And because the Bible says that my people who are called by my name, my people who are called by my name and the people of at Nogoku, they are ever people, okay? And I'm one. The ever people's God is called Yeve. So they are the people who are called by the name of God. And as for Israel, the term there's no. Now I just wanted to say that Israel is Yishrael in Hebrew. Yishrael. And the name of their God is Yah or Yahweh. So they are also named after their God, Yah or Yahweh. Yishrael. So they are also a people who are called by the name of God. And I want to extend it. Accounts also are called by the name of their God. Now, number two, nobody can give a name to God. And let's just be patient. Let's just take that one cool. Nobody can call the name of God. You can only mention the name of God that has been revealed to you or your ancestor. Nobody can. God, God is, unless we don't know what we mean by omniscient, omniscient signs, God is past knowing. That is simple English. So if church tradition tells us that God is past knowing and all the great, great people who were mightily used by God with clear credential tell us that God is past knowing, who are you to say God is Yahweh or God is this? God was a name before revelation came to Abraham to move from his father's house to go to a place and I am Yahweh to you. I'm Yahweh to you because this is who I will be. Yahweh means the God who saves. So I will save you. You shall be safe. Even though you are going to the land of Canaan, you shall be safe. Mm. That is the, re I'm revealing myself to you. It's called an extraterrestrial encounter. And all people in Africa have so many extraterrestrial encounters. You go to the farm and you see some, the thing, the thing is shining, shining. And you hear a voice and say, take me, put me in a calabar. Do this for me, do this for me, do this for me. When you do that for me, you shall prosper. You do it and you prosper. That is God to you. So it's allowed? No, I didn't say it's allowed. I'm teaching something. Mm. That is God to you. You go to the farm or you're tapping pan wine and you see a a figure so tall and the thing comes so low and speaks to you and tells you give me pound and you ask the thing which pound one do you want is it is it soft or hard and he says oh, anyone and you mixed it and you gave it to the thing and it didn't tell you look i am your ancestor you see you see that injury you have or that those days there were so many sicknesses there was no medical signs there was no so you see that thing that is that that thing this hair mix it mm, at hospital put it there then healing takes place. Then from that time, you keep hearing voices and you are getting helps to heal people. That was God to you. Because we all agree and know that the human race fell and we all don't have an accurate idea of God. However, spirits were all over in the planet. When you yearn, you desire, you will meet. So when you say Yahweh, the God who saves, I will take you from your fathers out to a land you do not know. But you shall be safe. You shall be safe. So it is based on that infrastructure that Jesus came to walk upon, that the Lord who saves. Let's put that aside. El is the ancient name of God. That is the, the God of thunder, the fierce God. So there is a, a pre-classical God, a God that was in existence before writing began. The God that was in existence be before writing began is like God that is a God of truth, God of judgment. Is the same God that the Nuhupu people are holding on to. That God or that revelation of God predated the writing of the Bible. So we should understand that it is God revealed in ancient times now with time changes are coming jesus has also come and he's saying that i am god revealed to you my concept of god is this salvation love no more judgment no more killing somebody for stealing good forgiveness so you are supposed to listen to the argument that hmm. jesus is making and the argument that other people who have encounters with god are making and choose the god you will follow Simple. Simple. So nobody should ascribe the name of God to himself and assume that others. I just told you, as for, as for Yah and Yisrael, Yahweh is there. But I'm an Ebe. Yebe. That, that's why I hear. I didn't say Yahweh. I'm a hardcore Ebe. Yebe. 
every they are named after their God. And if every people do a research about the ancient concepts of God that existed in their tribe, they all realize that there's an aspect of the name of their tribe that is tied to their ancestors' concept of it. I think that's basically okay. it. Nufiala, when you're called into no, can you sit with him and discuss if you yeah, want why not? to? Yeah. Okay, so um Nufiala, he's oh, he, he's equally ready to sit with you so we discuss and get into that. Uh they are now all your books now, or the mm, church, mm, and that was yeah, your good and uh, good and, yeah. uh, that's that's yeah. that's a very very old episode and it's still it's still trending my research shows that the creator of the universe was not known as God the creator was never known or was never called God from the beginning of time the title or the name God is the name of a Germanic idol it is there google it you come across it it is called Guda. Then, gradually, it was corrupted. This is how it, they spell it. Guda. The German, is a Germanic idol, which was corrupted. Then, gradually, it was changed to what? Guda. From there, it was shortened. When the King James and his 47 clergymen were translating the Bible, or the Afar scriptures, they turned it into what? God. From the beginning of time, before the Europeans translated the Bible, this was not the name of the creator. The title God was never the name of the creator. So the question is, what was the what name, was the name yes. of the creator? Now we're going to find out what was the name of the creator. <laughs> God, a German for Bosom. God, a German for Bosom. Obian Koyani research. And find out the truth. Mm. Now we look at, we're going to look at the true name mm -hmm. of the creator. This is where I would like to use the scriptures. We will start off from, um, I would like everyone to read First Samuel chapter 12 verse 8. In this scripture, Samuel invoke the God of thunder, lightning, and fire. This God of thunder, lightning, and fire when you come to the ever pilo language, I'm using the word pilo because it's one of the ancient languages, one of the oldest languages. The god of thunder is known in the ever pilo language as what? Now, after you finish or we finish reading First Samuel chapter 12, verse 18, we go to Job chapter 37 verse 4 to 5 that also describe or gives you a clear understanding of who the god of thunder lightning is then from there we can also read first samuel chapter 7 verse 10 it also will give you a clear picture of who or uh, of how or uh, let me say the true name of the creator is so now let's come back home to the ever pilo language. We in the Volta region, or when I say ever pilo, when I say we in ever Danigba, when I say ever Danigba, I'm not only talking about the Volta region, but I'm talking about four or five countries put together or more. I'm talking about Ghana, talking about the people of Gadangbe. When I talk about the Gadangbe, our people from Greater Accra, all the way to Sudoku, attached to the Volta region, the Volterians, Anglos, all the Volterians. Okay, then our people in Togo, Beni, and Nigeria, the Yoruba, the, these are all part of the Ebedanyigma. That is what was known as what? The Slave Coast. Then we have the Gold Coast, then the Ivory Coast. This is how the Europeans divided our land during the slave trade. So we ask about our, our, our God, let's say our Mawuga is the God of thunder and lightning. And his name is who? Now, this is Yeva, the God of thunder, lightning, lightning and, and fire. fire. This is Yeva. So how do you know his people? Which means if his people are called by name, it means that his people derive this, their name from his name. 
So from there, you have, what do you have here? Ever. That is ever or a vow referring to us. Ever. So, Yebe. God of tender. God of tender. Lightning, lightning and, fire. and thunder. He has his own priesthood nation. I'm coming. I'm coming there. So that is why today, even from the ancient of this, even from the time the nation of Israel was there, the God of thunder and lightning was there. If you go to Nogoku today, the God of thunder and lightning is still there. It's still there. It's still there. It's we still brought it up. To understand African spirituality, we need to redefine the Eurocentric concept of God because their concept of God has nothing to do with our concept of God. For instance, when you go to first, uh, when you go to first Samuel, I wish we have the Bible here. First Samuel read. chapter 12, verse 8. There they say Samuel invoked the God of thunder and lightning. So until you invoke it, until you activate it and assign a specific role to him, cannot just get up and, and, and strike. In the ancient past, when the Israelites were even going to war, it's a god of war. He goes to war. He strikes all his enemies dead. That is why today, up to today, people don't really understand why the God in the Bible in those days was striking people dead by lightning and thunder. 